Hey everybody, this is Dwight Peters from QuarterWaters.com, the site for social entrepreneurs. Where social entrepreneurs come on the program, they talk about the issue they're tackling, the impact they're making, and share helpful business tips along the way. If you're watching this program, it's because you want to change the world through the power of business. You came to the right spot. Now, today's program, I have with us Stacy McCoy. Stacy is the co-founder and CEO of Give to Get Jobs, a company that connects job seekers wanting to make a living doing good with the jobs that will fulfill those dreams. Stacy, welcome to the program. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Uh, we're happy to have you. Um, I read that little brief intro about what you guys do but i know it's, it's more than that for my viewers that aren't familiar with give to get jobs uh just tell them exactly what it is sure um so give to get jobs um at the heart of it is a job board and information hub for jobs that use a sustainable business model to solve a social or environmental issue um now the thing is this is a very gray area it's a massive gray area so we try and be as inclusive as possible and so jobs you might find or internships on the site can range from your um, nonprofit um, on one end to your and your um, L3Cs to all the way up to your B corporations and your FPCs on the other side, and then even your corporate social responsibility jobs, or maybe it's a marketing job at a corporation where you're doing most of your um, time on cause marketing initiatives. So we try and be as inclusive as possible and just try and harness all of those jobs that are using business um, to give back. Awesome. And, yeah, so that's at the heart of it. And then we, we do um, a couple of different things around that. So, of course, we have our jobs and internship postings, um, but we also offer application assistance to job seekers who might need resume and cover letter help. And um, we're rolling out two new programs. We're going to work on them this summer and hopefully roll them out in the fall that will help us get um, take our work that we're doing online and take it offline in, into the communities. We're going to do something called the Hiring Squad, which will have, um, we'll have a member out in all the social enterprise hubs so we can really be on the ground connecting to um, potential job seekers or people who are interested this, in this space and tell them what it's all about and kind of what the job prospects are like. Um, and then do a college ambassador program where we'll hopefully be on um, college campuses in the fall and start working with students to, to raise awareness about these types of jobs and what opportunities exist and help them um, throw events and that type of thing. Um, and then, of course, as a central social enterprise ourselves, we also have a giving model. And so we use a portion of the proceeds um, to fund job creation programs. Awesome. That That's amazing. Now we're going to jump into my favorite part. Um, I love tapping into the story of how it all got started so bring me back you guys launched when did you guys launch it am i correct was it last year may yeah so may 2nd last year so just we just hit our one year anniversary last week happy birthday thank you <laughs> all right so bring me back to the beginning thoughts of this how did this all get started so this all got started um because my academic background is in international develop development and I was very, I was hyper focused on international development and, and international human rights. Um, and then um, my husband's actually a year ahead of me in school, and so he graduated. And he came out to the West Coast to start a PhD program. And um, the beginning of my senior year in college, he proposed. Uh -huh. So. I knew that I was going to be spending a, a, um, a fair amount of time in L.A. And I love L.A. as a city, but unfortunately it doesn't have an international development sector. Um, there's pretty much two companies and that's it. So that was difficult for me coming into an environment where really it didn't have the opportunities that I prepared so hard for. Um, but one thing I started learning about my senior year in a free trade versus fair trade class was this idea of social enterprise and corporate social responsibility. Um, and so after I graduated, as I was exploring different areas, I spent time in academia, um, a brief stint in the corporate sector, volunteer a lot with nonprofits. Um, I started really becoming increasingly interested in that gray area of social enterprise and CSR, and that's the area that I really wanted to be in. But because these sectors are so 
they're young, but they're established and they're not streamlined at all, it's really difficult to find those jobs. You have to know what to search for, how to search for it, you know, all the different fragmented directories to find it. And it takes a really long time. And a lot of times you come up short. So that was sort of the inspiration behind it um, was just instead of complain about that issue that I was having was to fix it. And that's what Give to Get Jobs aims to do. It just makes it, it um, we just hope to make it a lot easier for everyone to find jobs in this space because it is a really attractive space right now. It's kind of what everyone wants to do, everyone wants to get into it, but they don't really know much about how to do that. Yeah. Uh, so you come up with this idea, but you didn't do it by yourself. You have mm -hmm. an interesting co-founder with you. How did this come about? Go ahead, speak about it. So, yes. Yeah, so my co-founder is my mom. <laughs> um, and basically what happened was um, I'm always kind of coming up with ideas. But this idea was one that was actually, because it's a website and it's online, and um, it was easier to implement. And so I was thinking about it, and I was thinking about who I could do it with, not just myself. And I was, um, I mean, I talked to my mom every day anyways. So I was on with her on the phone, and, um, and my mom got, my parents got divorced um, when I was in high school. And because of the housing market and some other things that happened, um, she realized that she's probably going to have to go back into the job market. Yeah. And she stayed home with me and my sister um, for 20 years. And she'd been out of it for a long time. And so she was trying to figure out, well, how can she get back into the job market and have a job that's meaningful and that she enjoys and after being out for so long. Um, so when I came up, when I talked to her about this idea and what I wanted to do, um, she was like, well, what about me? Like, <laughs> I can do this. And, um, and I was like, well, yeah, okay. And so we... Um, I remember I told her, well, it's online. You're going to need to kind of... Um, Wait a you know, second. Did you interview your mom for that position? <laughs> well, we didn't know. It wasn't necessarily an interview. I just talked yeah. to her about kind of the reality of um, working online is so much different than, you know, um, what business was in the past. And that yeah. getting familiar with social media and being comfortable with things like that. Um, so that day she went out and she bought the social media Bible and um, a couple other books and just kind of jumped right in. Um and then we just went for it. So, awesome, awesome. So you guys been up for a year. You guys get the site up and running. What's been some of the challenges so far or um, that think, you experienced throughout the year? I think the biggest challenges today is just there's so much noise out there, and um, you're just trying to cut through it the best you possibly can. So it's just about building visibility in that base because um, we've been really lucky in that you know everyone we've talked to is really interested in the idea and they understand the need for it and they're really on board with it and they're passionate about it. Um, but it's just about reaching more people. So that's, the, I think, the biggest hurdle is just figuring out, um, especially when your business is all online yeah. and there's so much stuff online, is how can you really cut through that? And how, what are some of the tactics that you guys have been using and you would say that you guys have been using effectively to do that? Um... Well, we do a couple of things. So one big thing, of course, on a shoestring budget is we use social media to get the word out and to meet people. And I've met so many people, so many amazing people in social enterprise and CSR um, through Twitter. Twitter has been a great relationship building tool um, for me and for us. Um, so that's been really helpful. Um, Facebook is a great way too. And certainly on the job side, what we found is LinkedIn is really helpful to get the word out about the jobs that we have open and internships that we have open. Um, so social media is a big thing for us. And then also just direct outreach. Um, in a lot of ways, because we're so young, even though we're a job board, yeah. we do act kind of as a recruiter as well. And so whenever we, um, most of the jobs on our site, we've gotten through direct outreach. So we'll find social entrepreneurs and we'll shoot them an email or social enterprises. Um, and we'll just let them know about us and what we're all about and what our goals are. And if they have something open and, and, things reson and it resonates with them, they'll post. That's where we get most of our um, our jobs, just from that direct outreach. And the same goes with our um, our job applicants, too. Then once we have a job and internship, we know what the client is looking for. Then we go out and we specifically try and find those types of people. Yeah. So then it's like reaching out to what is an internship, like college groups and uh, university career centers and all of that. Um, and if it's a full-time position, kind of the network groups, the interest groups. Um, and that type of thing. So we do a lot of direct outreach as well. 
All right, cool. That's that's amazing. I just like how I just like the whole concept behind it, and the fact that you guys are also making an impact. Let's speak on that a little bit more. So, how do you guys gauge your impact, or what metrics do you guys use to gauge it? So, one of the reasons. So, um, our nonprofit partner is See Your Impact, and one of the reasons why I chose See Your or we chose See Your Impact from the beginning was because it was important um, to start making an impact right away, and. Um, being so young, um, we're still actually not up to a revenue generating model yet. We still we're still on a special, um, but even when we are, you know, up to our full price model, it's not like we have a, a ton of money to give per job posting because we still need to be sustainable. And so we give twenty five dollars um, for every job posting. And the great thing about See Your Impact is that little amount of money can have a big impact right away. Um, so, are you guys able to share how much? Um it will cost for a job posting. Yeah, yeah. So um, when we go to full price, it will be one seventy five per job posting. We'll donate the twenty five dollars of that, um, and that's actually below most job boards. Like LinkedIn's two fifty. Um, Monster and Career Builder can run you like four hundred. Um, it's um, it's pretty cheap, especially for the for profit sector. Um, so not only is it competitive app, but then we give back on top of that. We also do more work than just a job board because we actually go out and try and find people for each position. Um, so that's the idea behind the price. And then the long-term goal is once we're sustainable, um, is to keep increasing that donation amount. So um, I call it like like Walmart in some ways because Walmart has um, razor thin profit margins, but they're sustainable. And they're insanely profitable um, because of the volume that they operate at. Yeah. So hopefully someday when we get you know at a massive volume of jobs, um, our donation amount and the amount that we keep will be 50-50 and maybe even more, you know. All right. more. Based on the volume. Yeah, that's understandable. Yeah. No, I, I love it. I love it. So for any aspiring social entrepreneur that's watching this program, what, what other advice would you give them? Um, I would give them the advice of at some point you just have to do it. And most of the time, most of the social entrepreneurs that I know and the founders that I know, the number one thing that everyone says is they wish they had done it sooner. And it's true because um, people always like entrepreneurs and they always like to see people who are sitting there, you know, pushing boundaries, um, taking matters into their own hands. And so even if you fail, it's a great thing to put on your resume. It's a great thing to um, show people that you've done. At least you tried. Um, and so I think that that's the biggest thing. There's never going to be a perfect time to do anything. I mean, for me, um, my husband's in a PhD program, so he just gets a stipend. So we're not, it's not exactly like we're, um, it's the most ideal time to do it, but there's never an ideal time to do it. And so that's why, um, you know, regardless of what you think your boundaries are, you just have to work within them. Just make it happen. Yeah. No, I love it. You know, um, I've been doing this for a while, and uh, I get I get that advice a lot. I realize that a lot of the social entrepreneurs that come on the program, they um they touch on two things: you were making it happen, or you got to have that passion. And it goes hand in hand. In order for you right. to make it happen, you have to have that passion. And mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing this for six months so far with all these interviews, and mm -hmm. the amount of stuff that I learned from you guys. Like, I'm ready to go with my social <laughs> enterprise, you know? But uh, besides that, Stacey, it's been great. Are we leaving anything out? Um, Let me think. I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, I think we covered pretty well kind of at the heart of it what we're trying to do. Um, and so certainly, oh, I actually, there is one thing we're leaving out. Cool. So one thing, one thing that we created, um, because we're a young company, and actually, that's, so that's another thing. Um, a lot of other job boards, when they start out, um, or just anyways, they end up pulling jobs from other places and putting it up on their site for free. Um, it's sort of a gray area, but it's accepted. That's what people do. For us, we've never done that because we have a giving model, and that would be sacrificing our giving model. So every single job we've ever had on the site, an employer actually posted themselves. Um, and because of that, it takes longer to grow. We're not just going to all of a sudden have a 1,000 jobs on the board because... Because you're not pulling from other... Areas. Right. That it takes time to grow organically like that. Um, so one thing that we did in the meantime um, to help people out while we grow is we created um, what is currently the most um, comprehensive database of social enterprises in the United States. Um, so again, we cover that whole gray area. Um, and right now, there's about 1,600 companies in there. Um, 
I find new ones every day. So we're trying to add to it every day and I'm sure that number will continue to grow. But um, that's just another resource that we have and that we sort of gave our gift to the community in some ways as we um, created this database. So if you don't find a job in your area or an internship in your area, you can at least go and find a company that's in your city that you might, um, that might whose values might align with yours and then you can go to their website directly and contact them or see if they're hiring. Awesome. That that's an awesome tool and that's an awesome resource. Stacy McCoy, thank you for <laughs> stopping by and joining us on our program. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for having me.